This is my son Gimli. Say hello. Hello. We have no idea how old he is. We got him third or fourth hand with his brother Legolas, who was a white ferret. We renamed them because the people who um, had them before us didn't even didn't even have names for them. They cared so little. Um, we know he's kind of elderly by the way he walks and the way he plays. Uh, he is very set in his ways already. He is the type of ferret who will dig at the doors. Come on, me kiss. Thank you. Um, if they're shut. And that's the only thing that we can't really remedy other than keeping the doors open. He's pretty good with not getting into things. And we've... Walking all over my keyboard. We've made our home pretty animal proof. We have a lot of guinea pigs and a couple rabbits and now the ferrets. But um, I'll insert a picture of what we had to do with because if you have um, recliners plus ferrets it's a very dangerous situation so and now he's walking in the linoleum i don't know if you can hear um i've trapped him over here we have this small kind of nook area next to our kitchen and we bought this huge thing of plywood from menards for like ten dollars and we put it up and it just it sits between the wall and like a tote holds it together and cuts it off so that he can't get over here because we're very antisocial. So instead of buying a couch, we bought two recliners. <laughs> um, but they can get caught in the recliner if you pull it back or if you close it shut, they can get caught in there and die really easily. One of the main big things about ferrets other than that is that um they I don't know some people say they stink they have this musk about them but it's not like a bad musk it's just a different smell it's like somebody else's cologne and you'll get used to it you know the more you bathe them actually the worse it gets because they have to re-scent themselves so if you just let it be for a little while you won't even really notice it they do have squishy poops though that if you don't clean them up very often and it's in the same spot like if they're just in their cage that can get kind of um stinky but if you clean it up pretty often or if they are in litter boxes then it doesn't really matter say hello no no he's no man he's my old man oh thank you okay okay yes oh oh yeah oh yes thank you it's like a cat tongue it's a little bit rough but uh what I really wanted to talk about was there's these puppy pee pads and they come they're probably a couple feet by a couple feet feet right like this is yeah a couple feet <laughs> um and I should have brought one over here but I'm not gonna stand up because I don't have pants on uh, but what I do is I cut them into four equal squares and I put them in the corners of the most pooped in area. Um, ferrets like to poop in corners for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but he's mostly a free roaming ferret because Legolas passed away and he needs space and playtime and play area. so. We just let him roam around the house. He's still 
physically capable to go up and down the carpeted stairs by himself, so he's not insanely old, but um, being locked away by himself could be pretty mentally hard. So, um, he probably poops on the pee pads. I probably have to change them. I, I change them every day like a diaper. <laughs> like a child's diaper. But I probably change about four to seven a day depending on um, how much he eats, if he's more hungry that day, you know, stuff like that. And if he poops or pees on the same one. If he pees on one and then poops on a different one and then goes to a different one and does both, you know, then it's higher or lower. But the 100 or 200 pack was like ten dollars and if you cut that down into four different squares and you only have to change the four squares a day it's one pad so you could do the math with that it's not the most economical but he was already pretty set in his ways in that he doesn't like to poop in cat litter boxes and even if he did being a free range ferret we would be we would have you know 30 different litter boxes and it would be all over the place and every box that you make against the wall makes another two corners you know it just it's pandemonium so all you have to do is find out where exactly they like to poop and then put the pads there and then make sure that you change it once it's used either poop or pee because a lot of the times they won't go back to a used one the the fact that it's a puppy pee pad helps a lot in the absorption because we tried um, newspaper, you know, we get a bunch of newspapers in the mail uh, all the time and we thought, oh, well, we'll use these. No, it'll soak right through. They actually have a lot of urine. They, when they eat, they, they have a pretty fast metabolism, so um, that that soaked right through. And then we tried to put a little, like, one dollar carpet underneath it. And that soaked right through and so then we started the puppy pee pads because our dog has some incontinence issues so we already had them and i tried it and actually really worked pretty perfectly so that's how we do it for that he's walking around me he's like why am i over here he's never over here because it's where the chairs are but um the scratching at the door thing I mean, you can you can train it out of younger ferrets. Get out of my laptop. Get out from under there. You can train it out of um, younger ferrets, but just kind of leave the doors open for them. Otherwise, they'll they'll scratch at the closed door. I don't know why. They just do. They're diggers. We tried to make him a digging box with sand or with dirt or with fluff with kitty litter. He didn't like it. He didn't care. He is too, too lazy, you know. <laughs> the rabbits really like them though, so we gave them to him, them. Um, and that's another thing, the digging boxes is a really good thing to have for them. Um, other than the squashing in the chairs and the smell, the other thing that I come up against with people asking me about ferrets is, don't you step on him? We have had animals for a very long time, and a lot of animals, so we're actually really good with not stepping on them, and not rolling over on them, and, you know, not dropping them. But for people who haven't had animals, or ferrets, I can understand how it can be actually really scary and I read online about a guy who actually stepped on two different ferrets and crushed their backs but really if you've had a dog or a cat it's it's the same thing you just watch your feet or if you've had kids you kind of notice that movement out of the side of your uh, eye you know you see it and we've gotten really good at the hesitate step where you are gonna go put your foot down and you go to walk and you put your foot down and you feel something and you move it! <laughs> we might trip every now and then because of it, but at least we don't squash them to death, so... I don't know. Um, we're pretty good with that. He's actually slept in our bed with us for a couple weeks, but... He got sick of that. I don't know. Probably both of us rolling around and him having to constantly move. But, uh... 
We've noticed that in his older age, he likes stealing the dog food. Generally, you feed a ferret ferret food or cat food. And, um, you know, he's never really been partial to either. So we let him have a little bit of dog food, but we do kind of force him to eat his food. He does have a cage, and when he's being really in insanely naughty, scratching at the doors when we have to have them closed or whatever. Uh, we will lock him in his cage and he will scratch at the bottom of the cage. Really, there's not really anything you can do. You just have to wait, let him stop. Then he'll, like a kid, tire himself out. Um, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty resilient, you know. They're pretty springy. He's a little older, so he's not so springy. Mm -hmm. But he's a good boy. And he comes to his name, uh, either Gimli or my son. So, you know, they're, they're really intelligent. I think they're probably more intelligent than a rabbit. Not quite as intelligent as a dog. Probably on par with a cat where they probably have that intelligence, but they don't really care. So, I don't know. If you don't mind a little bit of a musk, like I said, it's basically like having another person with cologne on in the house. And if he's or she is free range in the house, as long as you have something like the puppy pee pads where you can just clean it up really easily and your house is pretty ferret proof, I would suggest getting one, even if you had kids, as long as they're responsible kids five and up probably because of the squishing and the petting really hard, young toddlers like to pet really hard. Um, they're nice, they're smart, they're just kind of naughty. They will get into any nook and cranny, so if you have an older house, maybe it's not very good, but if you have a newer apartment or something where you know that it's just pure walls and nothing to get into then then that's I would definitely suggest a ferret. <laughs>